the development of the whole approach about Morris circle is going to start with the basic general equations associated with stresses on an inclined plane. Right? And that's what you see repeated here. The ones that we want to focus on are the not the special one for sigma x and sigma y on those those planes, but just this first one will be fine. That will that one we'll call the normal stress on an arbitrary plane. And this one down here is the shear stress on that plane. Right? Those are the two that, that we really want. Now there's going to be a couple little things that we'll do to make the development work a little bit easier to play with, and that is that this first term, this one right there, that is just sigma average. And let's just call it that. And for all this development work, let's call this whole thing just capital A, and just to be consistent with my little approach here, we'll call that capital B. Right now, just make our our sort of initial development work a little bit easier. Right, so there's equation one, there's equation two. And ultimately, we're going to work with these and create an equation that turns out to be the equation of a circle. The way we're gonna get there is we're gonna simplify. We'll take this first term that we have here, the sigma average, and we're gonna take it to the other side. So we'll have sigma n minus sigma average. And then the right-hand side becomes a times cosine of two theta plus b times sine of two theta. It's key that the sine and the cosine have the same angular argument in it, right? And then the second equation is gen ta nt, and then again, we've got simplification with these coefficients here, minus a times sine of two theta, plus then the b times cosine of two theta. Now, anytime you see both sine and cosine running around, and they have the same argument, you start thinking about how can you get rid of that? And of course, if we only had cosine squared and a sine squared kind of thing, then oh, those usually add up to one. And that's your little hint about what we're gonna do. We're gonna square both sides of each equation. Right? And so let's call the first one equation three, the second one equation four. When we do that, then, and add these together. Now we'll take them one step at a time, right? So we got the first part, sigma n minus the sigma average quantity squared. Then the expansion of this one will be a squared times cosine squared. I'm not gonna write the two theta anymore because it's the same for all, same argument for all of these. Plus two ab cosine times sine plus b squared times sine squared. All right, the second equation is ta nt squared, and then we get the first term squared, a squared times sine squared, and then we'll have a minus 2ab cosine times sine, and then finally plus a b squared cosine squared term. Right, so call that equations five and six, and we'll just add those two together. And you'll get then sigma n minus sigma average quantity squared. You might be like, well, why don't you expand that? And you'll see why in a second. Just leave it as is right there. These two add together, and they have the cosine squared, sine squared have the same argument and the same amplitude. So factor that out, oh, you just get a squared. And then these two cancel away, and we get up for the other one plus b squared. So, hmm, what do you end up with here? This is very cool. This is gonna be the radius squared of our circle. And that will be our y value. And then this other part is going to be our x, and there's our origin of our circle. We're like, what? All right, let's look at a couple of things. One, this whole r business. All right, the r is going to be equal to the square root of this stuff here. All right, a was our sigma x minus sigma y divided by 2 quantity squared. Our B term was the tau xy. 
and that's also squared. So there's your radius for this. These are things we start the problem off with, sigma x and sigma y. They're on this right-hand side of, of our expression up here, and we know the tau x, y, too. Over here, the sigma average, well, that's also a known quantity. So the variables are those two quantities, and that's the sigma n, and that's the tau nt, and that tells us then that for any particular situation, that the combination of the shear stress and the normal stress on any arbitrary plane can be thought of in terms of a series of axes where we've got the normal stress on the horizontal axis, we've got the shear stress on the other, right? That's the x and the y's. And when we plot that, then it's going to be a circle that is then centered on the sigma axis. And its origin is shifted over, or rather its center is shifted over from the origin of the whole coordinate system by what that x naught, which turns out to be sigma average. And there's your radius. It's a very clever way to represent this complicated set of equations that are the stress transformation uh, equations. And the partnering of the sigma and n at every point then tells us exactly what happens at any arbitrary the oriented incline plane. Very cool. And this is very easy to create. And just understanding how circles work, we don't have to memorize all these other equations. We don't have to do the plug and chug. chug. We can then just build everything based upon that right there. That's what we'll learn how to do next.